Monday. Good morning. Good morning. We're back again. Good morning. Um, we trust that your weekend was fun and exciting, uh, rest, restorative, and uh, you're ready to rock on this new week, that you, that you get another shot. Uh, you get another shot to be awesome this week, and I'm sure you're going to be. Uh, I, I'm sure there's a lot that you um, want want to accomplish this week uh, for yourself, for your family, for God, and I'm sure this will be the week that you'll be able to do just that. Uh, we're going to do something different. We're going to do something a little different today. Just a little different. Not much different. Um, a lot of a lot of people have been. Um, communicating with Deb and and <laughs> it seems the number one question is not the things that you think they are um, the number one question um, is do you guys pastor a church no Lord no <laughs> no no we've kind of seen what that that entails thank you no uh, no um, not at all and and, and and like I said in the um, in, in, in the show notes, you know, and thank God for those who you call to that office, and thank yes. you that it's not me. <laughs> we are very grateful for our pastors, and 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 they do a wonderful job. We constantly have we pray for them because it's it's a tough job, and um, I think that everyone is called to be a somewhat minister. If you are a child of God, you are required to to minister and help other people. But there's a difference between being minister, being a minister and being a pastor. Uh, pastoring is a tough job. It's a, t it's a tough, it's, it, it's, it's a 24 seven sort of, sort of office that, um, that we have not been called to. Um, and not every, and, and, and not everybody should be. And, and, and so, uh, however, we are going to, um, sort of break away from what we normally do. Hang on a second, I've got to make an adjustment. Just a second. Hey YouTube, uh, just a little bit. Oh, y'all be complaining. If, if, if I don't make that adjustment, y'all be complaining about it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, so we're going to depart from what we normally um, talk about, kind of, sort of. Uh, I want to talk, we want to talk about the top three people in your life that you should pray for um, all the time. Now, I'm not talking about I'm not talking about individuals. I'm not talking about that you should pray for um, your husband or, or your children. No, no, no. no. You, I, you shouldn't pray for Aunt, you know, Aunt Myrtle. You know, your Aunt Myrtle, who's got um, you know, who's got bunions. <laughs> you know, I'm not talking about. That. I'm talking about just the regular people in your life. Um, that you should that you should pray for. Should you pray for your butcher or your uh, your hairdresser? I'm talking about that kind of thing. Not in not necessarily individuals. So 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 don't start throwing down names. And I know what y'all do. Y'all start throwing down names in the comments uh, of individuals that we should pray for, and that's okay. But that's not what we're talking about here. Um, we're talking about you know what people in your life that you should constantly pray for. Hey Jess, how are you doing, hon? How are you yes. feeling? Um, that's we kind of want to talk about today, um, and there's top and and, and BJ and there and and, and and I thought that there should be a top three that you always that you always pray for all the time. Hey Terry, um, as people are dropping in to our um, Facebook live, YouTube we're doing a Facebook live at the same time we're doing we're recording this because that's how we have to do it. Uh, Good morning, BJ. Um, so, the, the top three people that you should pray for all the time. Um, so, who do you have? Well, um, ladies first. <laughs> I have a um, pastor of your church, pastor and his wife of your church. If okay. you attend church. Uh, they're, they're religious people. Why should you pray for religious people? <laughs> and, and, well, I kind of already said why. We already kind of mentioned why you should pray for them because they, um, they have a large impact in your life and your family's life. And you want to make sure that they are staying, you know, focused and connected with God and that God is blessing them because the blessings that they receive come down to you as a member of the church. Isn't that interesting that we have a... Um we have a culture 
uh, a pop culture anyway, that gets upset, really gets upset, if your pastor gets blessed, or your pastor's wife gets blessed. If or they, if they're making money. If they get a new car. From the church. Or if they write a book and they, and they get money from the book and they do well, or their investments do well. You know what? Most pastors don't have 401ks. They don't have retirement, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. So they take the money that they do earn and and God's got to multiply it and God's got to do stuff with it because they have the same challenges in life that we have. Um, in They're their, human. In their families and in their finances. Hey, Sheila. Good morning. Um, so, Good morning, Daisy. So it's... it's Sherry. So, so why... I don't know why people people get upset. Pastor gets a, pastor gets a new car. Every, <laughs> people want to leave the church. People want to leave the church. Pastor gets a new car. Forget that you weren't around when he was driving that seventy four Pinto in nineteen eighty six, <laughs> delivering papers out of it. But he gets a new car. Every, people want people want to leave the church. I'm 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 not, I'm not understanding that. I'm not understanding that mentality at all. You uh, should want to see your pastor prosper. Um, you should want to see them have good things and have a beautiful home that you can come visit and you can, you know, uh, uh, it just makes sense that they would be blessed if you are blessing them. It's the it's the blessing of Abraham that comes from the head through the beard and through the rest of the body. And we are the rest of the body. So, yes, indeed, pray for the success of your pastor in your church and his family. Uh, because, because f frankly, it's a, it's a, and we alluded to this earlier, it's a tough thing. It's hard to be responsible for your own personal family. Imagine being, uh, oh, Sheila, you're welcome, huh? Um, you know what, imagine being responsible, and they are responsible because the Word tells, you, tells us that, um, that the teachers will receive a harsher judgment. Um, so they're responsible for y'all. Yes, and all your and all y'all madness, <laughs> you know. They have to be accountable. They're for accountable that. to God for that. So you know, you want them to have the things that they need. Um, you, you want them to have the, You want them to have the, have the blessings that God bestows upon them, uh, because it's good. It's ultimately good for you, but it's just a, it's just the right thing to do. Uh, and I think that that, that we that we really are falling into. Um, the, the, this negative culture that any time that happens, we sort of equate it with 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 theft and and they're taking people. And you know what? And and it's always they're taking stuff from people. It's always the god haters that come up, you know, that that come up and show up here on Facebook and say, you know what? Look what this look what this preacher's got, and look where they're, you know what? And look where they're, you know what? Their parishioners live and well. People hardly ever look at what pastors been through and what their family's been through um, to get where they are and what they have to do and what they have to sacrifice. Um, you know, you can say that the universe is providing you stuff, but get sick in the hospital and see, I, I see if the universe will come and visit you. <laughs> Let's see if the universe will come and visit you when you're sick in the hospital. It it's very it it's very comforting to to have your pastor, um, you know. We talk about when Willie got ill and and it happened like at four in the morning. You can call the universe. And yes, will, and they will and they will come and see about at you. At four in the morning, <laughs> I felt confident that I could call my pastor and tell him I need you. I need some help. I need some prayer. You know, as they are as we are rushing to the hospital with with my husband. You know, and within hours, he was there with me. And pastors are, are comforters and, 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 you know, in the time of troubles. And imagine having to do that for all of your people in your church, in the church. Being open all the time. You know, it's like a store that never, it's a store like that, that never, that never closes. Uh, so, and is, and is open and responsible for everyone who's in, you know, what, who's in that church. So, yes, if you want your church to succeed, if you want your life to succeed, yes, indeed, pray for, for your, your pastor. Pray for your pastors all the time. Pray that they're blessed. Pray that their families are blessed. Um, do that. And I, and I know that that's not the normal, normal thing. It's easier to criticize. 
Mm -hmm. It is easier to criticize. And go to another church. And that's what people do. They <laughs> they run off. You know, they're looking for the perfect church. But I got news for you: the no second the second perfect. you get there, it's not perfect anymore. <laughs> the second you walk in the door, <laughs> the, second, the second you darken their door and put your butt on the pew, it is no longer perfect because you're there. Um, and, and, and that's the truth. Now, I'll do one. I knew that. Now, we didn't talk about this. We talked about the idea, but we didn't look at each other's list. So we have no idea. So I have any idea. And okay, so none of y'all believe that. I don't care if you don't believe. It. I, don't, I don't care if you don't believe it. I don't care. Uh, but it's the truth. I, he was choosing the topic for today, and we talked about it over coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Sheila, Sheila, you, you know, Sheila, we pray for y'all because we know what y'all's job is. That's really funny. Can yes. you make a CD? No, but you know what you can do? You can share this with your friends. You can share this with your husband. Please share it with your congregation even. Um, please, please, please. Yes. And it's going, and we're going to put this up on YouTube. It's going to stay here on Facebook. We're going to put it up on YouTube. So please share it. Uh, uh, but So we didn't talk about the list. We didn't talk about the list. He now. just told me to pick three people. And I and 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 that you should pray for. And I was out here working late. I don't know up till like two in the morning uh, on some stuff that you guys are going to see on YouTube because it's cool. Um, and I knew that our list would be similar. Mm -hmm. I knew our list would be similar. So I'm going to skip my number one and go to my number two. <laughs> your uh, number one was pastor. My number one was pay for your pastor. <laughs> so we're going to skip to number two. <laughs> um, obviously. Um, we talked about just now talking about praying for your pastors because they are they, they, <laughs> uh, we're going to um, we talk about your pastor because they because of the responsibility they have and the position they have in your life and how they're how they are there to um, to help you and lift you up and pray for you um, and, and and sometimes get you through some pretty hard stuff and get you through hard stuff that and here's the deal, get you through hard stuff that nobody else knows about even. Mm -hmm. That nobody knows about. And somebody else who has that position in your life is your spouse. Your spouse has that position in your life because they'll get you through stuff that nobody, nobody but Jesus knows about. You understand? You know what I'm saying? Uh, because it's, it's not that I'm talking about people putting on a front when they leave, you know, when they go out the door. But we've learned in this time that what you don't do is that you don't take everything that's happened in your life and post it to your forehead for everybody. Or to Facebook. Same thing. <laughs> don't live your life in secret out loud on, on, on Facebook or on Instagram or Twitter or, 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 or social media or emailing all your friends that every in every jot and tittle of every struggle that you've ever had. Because everybody isn't for, for you. you they're not they're not and sometimes people are cheering on and praying for the fact that you are failing they like the fact that, that you're you have failing. problems so just be careful who you share your personal problems with they think it's in they think it's entertainment mm -hmm. we've gotten to a culture where where failure is entertainment um, and if you don't if you don't believe me search the internet for fail videos there's billions billions of fail videos where people are tr attempting something and they fail good morning Laura um, and people laugh they think it's funny when people fall and get hurt and our look and they get hurt um, because they failed or they attempt something like they uh, propose to somebody at a, at a baseball game and and the girl refuses them and people think that's funny something crushing happens in their lives we we've, we've taken failure to the point of entertainment so um, be really careful about what you post. Be really careful about what you tell other, what you tell other people, uh, what you share with other folks. So the uh, the person who sees you through all of this, um, all the stuff that nobody else sees, is your spouse. Pray for them daily because they've got you know what if they they're your spouse in, in thirty years, they've got a hard road and they got a hard road because of you. <laughs> they got a hard road because of you. Some of the decisions because that you make. They choose, they, because they choose to love you. And that makes a big, that makes a big difference. It's because they've chosen to love you. Um, so pray for, the, pray for them um, that they continue to have the strength to carry you <laughs> sometimes. 
um, if if you know what if you know if that's if, if that's all, that, all all it goes to, make sure that they have the strength, that they continue to have the strength, and they have the foresight, and they have the vision, um, and they get the rest, and they get the health, um, all the things that you would that that, that, that you would bless anybody else with that they continue to have that so definitely yes. pray for your spouse because when you pray for your spouse really you pray for yourself. yourself yes because you are one so pray for your spouse hmm? yes okay i'm having a little water i'm not i'm not drinking <laughs> i'm not day drinking this is not full of vodka it's actually are you sure yes i'm sure <laughs> I'm sure. I didn't. I didn't sneak. I just need vodka in the house and put it in a water bottle to put it in the refrigerator. <laughs> I, I I didn't do that. Okay. All right. You got one. I have one. Okay. Um, for those that you that have children and and that are in school and um, that are in daycare and different things like that. You should be praying for your child's teacher and their school environment because those people have a big influence in molding your child. Think about it. They are with that those people sometimes more than they are with you. And these people, te teachers have a big, big it, part of a child's life for a whole, well, not a whole year. What is it? Nine months. Okay. How many months are out of the year? Nine months, Nine and months. we're talking about seven, at least at least seven and a half hours every day there at school, um, and they and they do that in that environment for at least twelve years. Mm -hmm. In that environment, not the not not with the same teachers necessarily, but in the same sort of environment uh, for twelve for twelve years, and during that time they do spend more time, more wake more wake hours awake hours at school than they do at home. Hi, Chris and Johnny. Um, yes, it, so make it, put that on your prayer list to pray for your children's teacher, for the principal of that school that they are attending, um, for, for all of the teachers that they are involved with. The entire school needs to be covered in prayer because Lord knows they've taken the prayer out of the school. So you have the, the responsibility of lifting that school up Lifting uh, even as far as high as your the the school board and all of those people that you know that's making a difference in your child's life. So you need to to add those people to your prayer list and and not be fighting against them. And I'm not saying that all teachers are perfect and good, you know, because sometimes you your child may get a bad bad apple out of the group and they for some reason don't support your child but I, I, most of the time the teachers are really on the side of taking care of your child and and rearing them helping them to learn and prosper so make sure that you are are praying for them to to have the right mindset daily good morning Johnny having the right mindset and and knowing what is going to work for your child because the, they have to figure out what, you know, each lesson plan they have. But if your child learns a different way or has something, they need to be in discernment to know how to reach your child to, to learn. Yeah, you know, and, and I have been, because I spent 15.1 years in, working in the school system, um, and I'm not working in the school system currently. Uh, or I would be at work today. Or no, I wouldn't. Because it's summer school, isn't summer it? Is That's how long I've been. I've been out. I don't even know when school year is <laughs> anymore. I don't know. Um, but I'm telling you, most of the teachers that I worked with during that time, in middle school and high schools, bust their butt to do the best job they can under the, under the circumstances. Um, they really do. Uh, I, you know, I hear, you hear all the time that this teacher doesn't like my kid. Blah 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 blah. And I, let me help you with something. Most teachers, because they're human beings too and have lives, do not have the time to hate on your child. They just don't have the time for that because they've got their work to do at school and then they leave there and everybody's got a family that they go to and they got stuff to do. They don't sit around at, at home going, hmm, how can, I get Johnny? how can I get Johnny tomorrow? I hate him. That's, <laughs> I'm telling you, y'all, it, do, it does not, it does not happen. It does not happen. And uh, I've 
volunteered in school systems for a, a while um, through my job and I you can see sometimes where you know the parents come in and they you may have called them because guarding the child or something like that and the parents come in negative ready to be against the teacher uh, I'm coming to defend my offspring yes <laughs> and how the can, family how name can that person support your child when you're coming in and in front of the child degrading them yeah they, it, it used That's to just bothers me it used to be um, there was a partnership between parents and teachers where the teachers were actually parents in abstention um, and now there isn't a lot of that and, I, and, 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 and and this is another show but I, but I think it's because a lot of times kids don't go to schools in their own neighborhoods uh, they're they're shipped across the county or they're shipped across town um, because so sometimes of, the parents don't have a way of getting there because of because of racial things or because you've chosen to send your kid to a magnet school or some sort of special school or charter school across town so there's not that it's not that community connection anymore but I think you can build that as adults with teachers by simply understanding that first of all their job is hard because I'm telling you your kid does not behave anywhere like they behave at school that is not the same child you have at home it may not be the same obedient lovely child that you have at home that, that that's at school and that could be for any number of reasons so uh, yes teachers have a hard job and principals have a hard job and and assistant principals no nobody had nobody in that realm has it easy especially with the way things are on school campuses today yeah. nobody's got it easy everybody you know counselors everybody's working their tail off and then they have the extra threat of possible, you know, things happening at school. Yeah, violence. Violence. You have violence happening at school. So everybody, you know, and that was something that when when everybody brings up, well, when I was in school, well, when you were in school, no, nobody in the campus, nobody on the campus was worrying about somebody coming and to school and up. shooting everybody. <laughs> nobody was really that that wasn't on the on the on the list of stuff that anybody had to worry about. But it is, but you know what it is now. Um, so there's a lot. There's a lot to it. It's so. sad. So pray for um, pray for your children, for teachers, and, and and administrators in school and um, that environment. Um, it would not it would not be a, bi a bad idea if your kid's going to an, a, a new school um, next year for you for for you and, and your family. Maybe even to go to that school and do a, and do a prayer walk in front of that school to protect that that school. Um, praying mm -hmm. after the fact is okay, but praying before the fact is a lot more effective. Yes. Just, just, just saying. All right. All right. Is it my turn? It's your turn. Again? Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. Um, speaking in the same vein, pray for your children. Now, I, I'm not saying that necessarily you have to pray for your children who are six and seven. Pray, your, pray for your children who are, who are 27 and 37. Um, yes. Well, because they have to... They, they, they have taken everything that you have given them and they're trying to make a life out of it. That's a hard, that's a, that, that, that's a hard thing. That's hard. That's a hard thing. They've taken everything you've given them and they're trying to take that, those ingredients and make a life out of it. Um, and, and I think now um, it's more difficult than it's been in a while. You know, we often talk about, we often, you know, what are mean the millennials because of, uh, how some of them live their lives, but you know, I I I, I thought about it. You know, back uh, a couple of years, was it ten years, four years ago, when we were in college. We were in college. We were in college. <laughs> I thought we were in college. Like, something oh, okay. I'm, I'm just saying. Almost forty years. You know, ago, when, we, when we when we were in Tallahassee, um, you could get like a, a two bedroom apartment for I don't know how much. My first apartment there at University Square was like $117 a month. And when they raised it to 125 Got to get the hell out of here. What do you people, what do you, what do you people think they're doing? Oh, we are. <laughs> you know. <laughs> if you could get an apartment for 117 <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, so um, where right now, you know, in most places... A one bedroom apartment is is almost a thousand dollars. So it was a lot. You know what? We, frankly, it was just a whole bunch easier to have a job that didn't quite frankly pay a whole bunch, um, and then strike out. 
it was. It, I'm, I'm telling you, just financially, it was a whole bunch easier. Um, that you could get you know, that you could work at the Pizza Hut, and, and, and you know, in the galaxy, uh, in the end of the galaxy of Lafayette, <laughs> and 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 support yourself. And have an apartment, pay your light bills, and all that stuff, and still eat. And still eat. And not just eating ramen noodles. We ate. I, I but I'm gonna tell you, I ate a lot of pizza. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I ate a lot a, of pizza. I ate a pizza hut. I ate a whole bunch of pizza. I ate a lifetime of pizza. I ate my pizza and all yours. So it's kind of sometimes we <laughs> we shy away from pizza. So 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 pizza is not my my go to thing. Let's have a pizza. I'm like. Yeah, let's have something else. <laughs> and for a long and for a long time, I didn't have pizza. I was like, you know, I nah, no, no, I, I I've had everybody's pizza, so it it, it it was easier, you know what? And and they and, and we didn't have some of the things that your kids have to worry about um, nowadays. Nowadays, now I, so in in in, in certain ways, it's it, it's more difficult. In certain ways, it's. A it's, lot easier. Yeah, you know what? Because of the advance of technology and, and the like, so they they're able to do things um, without necessarily being hooked up to uh, what we consider a, condi- a you know traditional job. But it may take it may take longer. So you know, pray for your kids. You know, don't leave them out because you feed them. Don't leave them out because you fed them, and and don't leave them out. You know. They they still need that they still need that connection they they still need the covering of prayer and they and they still need the covering of their parents' prayer they still need that even if they are doing well and they are married and they have kids themselves and they're you know pray, they need prayer because you happen. know how things go in a marriage and and on a job and different things like that but pray for your your children pray for your kids please no pray matter for what age. Yeah, when it, if they're seven or seventeen or twenty-seven or thirty-seven or or for some of y'all, because y'all are old like that, forty-seven. We are not old that way. <laughs> we are not. I'm not. Are you old like that? No, I'm not. <laughs> I think so. You're older than me. So. Uh, yeah, I hope by, by a whole bunch, <laughs> like three and a half years. <laughs> so I'm like, so I'm like that. <laughs> All right, let's see. And uh, let's see. That was three. That was three. Now we each have uh, we had some crossover, and we and what we'll do what we do on the on on the YouTube page is that what we'll post both of our lists on the YouTube page in the description box, and um, you can comment and you can comment here on Facebook if you'd like um, your top three, and um, or and if you and if you've got some if you got something um, that you think that we ought to pray for. Or, or you got a situation in your life that we ought to pray for. Can you pray for something? Just let us know that down in the description box, um, and we'll get to you for sure. Um, thank you ever so much. Go ahead. One, well, one, I wanted to share what Uh-oh. we started doing, you know, in our household. I, I can't, I can't use mine because mine's holding up the camera. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to go and get yours? No, no, you don't have to. I can just describe well, it. I'll show it. Because this is but, vid- this is video. It's, yes. not, it's, not, it's not all radio. There is some podcasting going on. But it's not all. We, um, our pastor's daughter started this thing in church about a prayer box, and it, it's such a neat thing because we um, not only do we have the, you know the top three that we you would pray for, but we have a prayer box where we write people's names in it. And in that prayer, I'm using an old jewelry box my son made when he was like seven years old. <laughs> but um, we, uh, you write names down of people in your life that you're dealing with, that you know, you know. Um, and, and like, co- I have co-workers' names in there. I have, uh, like he said, your beautician and, and you know, neighbors, uh, you know. You, you all, some of your names are in my prayer box. So, and every day I shake that box up and I pull a name out. And that person, I focus on them for the whole day. Whenever, you know, I keep, keep it in my, my, um, my little journal that I have. 
And um, after my walk at lunchtime, I sit down and I pray for that person. And I pray whenever that person comes up in my mind, I, I pray for, for them throughout the day. So that is a really good way to, to get your prayer life, you know, going and to, to, to take the focus off of just yourself. That was something that, you know, I had I, throughout the years. Because we sit here, we're not perfect people. But what we, have, we, we are doing is trying to, to take the focus off of us and put it on God and put it on other people and help other people. And that's if you can if you can live your life that way, you'll find out that you live your life and you'll live your life more joyfully. You'll you you you'll actually you'll you'll be better. You'll you will feel better um, and you'll be better if you can live your life that way, focused not on yourself so much, but focus on other people. Um, I mean, the word tells you that you know what you pray. That, that, that you pray for healing for other people so so that so, so you'll be healed so um, and that works not just when people are sick but that works all the time mm -hmm. I mean so anytime you're feeling a little sad and depressed you know what it's best to go volunteer somewhere go help somebody else you know what go bake some cookies for a neighbor or you know what help you know if you see them out, out, outside you know doing some yard work go, go help go, go help go go do something for somebody else because that makes the difference do for somebody else and sometimes all you can do for pray pray for somebody else you know what it's you know pastor mentioned this i don't know a number of years ago it's hard to be mad at somebody if you're praying for them it's hard to be mad at them it's hard to hate somebody you're praying i mean you're praying for it really is yes um so go do that so that that boss, that co-worker, that person that you you having issues with, put them in a prayer list. Yeah. Pray for them. Take that irritating piece of sand and turn it into a pearl. That's how you do it. All right, we got to get out of here and make room somebody, for somebody else. So until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody, and for goodness sakes, y'all take care of yourself. We'll see you when we see you. Peace. Peace.